Living in the countryside might seem like a pleasant and ideal thing, but now and again there are unpleasant things that must be done. For example, right now I am bringing in the firewood. As the long winter nights approach, I have to make sure that I stay cosy and warm in the house. So I am bringing lots of logs into the house to keep me warm during those very, very long winter nights. We had snow just a few days ago and who knows, we might actually get some more. I hope you are feeling cosy and warm where you are at the moment because it's Sunday afternoon here in the UK, it's Christmas Eve and this is Live English. Do, 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 do. Can you hear those jingle bells? That means that Santa Claus is on his way. Have you been naughty or nice? Will Santa Claus bring something nice for you? Will he deliver a lovely present to you tonight? Because it is Christmas Eve everyone can I first of all say Merry Christmas to those who are celebrating and I hope you have a super duper time tomorrow of course now it is Christmas Eve so a big hi everybody this is Mr Duncan in England how are you today are you okay I hope so are you feeling happy and Christmassy I really really hope so here we go it's Christmas Eve as promised I said we would be here on Christmas Eve and here I am proving that I'm here <laughs> and I hope you are there as well I was a little bit worried because I wasn't sure how many people were going to join me on Christmas Eve because I do understand that a lot of people will be very busy during Christmas Eve they are preparing everything you see for Christmas Day normally during Christmas Day people will have parties family reunions will take place lots of things will occur on Christmas Day so normally the period leading up to Christmas Day is quite often very very busy so how are you going how are your Christmas plans I do realize before anyone says I do realize that not everyone celebrates Christmas but I'm going to say a big hello to all those who do celebrate and of course a big hello to those who don't everyone is welcome to my English lessons that is what I do here on YouTube I have been teaching English for over 11 years it's true later on we are going to go back in time 11 years years I'm not joking later on we will be going back in time to 2006 to take a look at one of my first ever videos on YouTube and it was filmed during my first YouTube Christmas which was in China I kid you not that coming later on of course we can't have the live stream without the live chat and as you can see everyone is here on the live chat hello Rosa hello Wilson hello Pedro hello Maria Foe hello to everyone oh a big hello to Russia as well I know that in Russia lots of people like to celebrate Christmas hello Mr Duncan from Connell Hello Connell, thank you very much for saying hello. Also Beverly is here, Francisco, Martin. Martin is watching in Mexico. A big hola to you. Analytic Brain, Lamb, and also Cam as well. Lots of people. Ukraine is now here as well. Thank you very much for your lovely, lovely messages. 
a little bit later on we're going to take a look at a special personal message that I received from one of my viewers yes a lovely young lady watching in Indonesia as has sent a very nice message but now we have more important things first of all what was the view like from my window this morning well to be honest it doesn't look very Christmassy outside it doesn't look very Christmassy it's hard to believe that you are now looking at the scenery the day before Christmas there is no snow it isn't cold in fact it's very mild today it's about 12 13 degrees I, I, I'm not joking it's around about 12 or 13 degrees today now that normally <laughs> occurs in late spring we don't normally associate those types of temperatures with winter uh, so it's very mild today and also tomorrow on Christmas Day sadly tomorrow it's going to be quite wet unfortunately so it's going to be a very rainy a very wet Christmas Day so Christmas is on the way and can I wish you all a very super time have a wonderful Christmas and I hope that Santa Claus brings you what you want I hope that has put you in a Christmas mood <laughs> some lovely Christmas lights they are actually the lights that are on the outside of my house they have been there for the last five years well not permanently but every year I put the lights on the front of the house and this year here in the place I live lots of other people have put lights on their houses as well so it would appear that I have influenced a lot of people in this area so now many people are putting lights on their houses as well as me so I hope you have a super duper time now I love receiving your messages I love receiving your emails and one thing that I love receiving is your video messages and here right now is a video message from one of my online students one of my viewers all the way from Indonesia hello Mr. Duncan and Mr. Steve how are you I hope you have a great weekend hi I am Tias I'm from Indonesia I want to say Merry Christmas for you and Mr. Steve and Happy New Year for all my friends everybody around the world thank you Tata Ta -ta. thank you very much Tias for your lovely lovely message isn't that good and of course you are more than welcome to send me your video messages if you'd like to say hello not just today but also next week the week after or for any of my live English streams you can send a message to me uh, through the video chat or of course you can record it on your mobile phone whatever you want to do it would be lovely to hear and also see you as well right 
so ts said hello to me but also she said hello to someone else another person lurking around in the corner of the studio just over there yes of course lots of people are already asking they're asking for mr steve mr steve mr steve there he is on the screen it's mr steve hello hello everyone how lovely to get such nice messages do you know i can feel i can feel the love coming straight out of that camera lens from all <laughs> your lovely students around the world <laughs> hello and look at all this mr duncan has uh, dressed me <laughs> before the show he said you've got to put this red jumper on this red cardigan and uh, you've got to wear a, a santa hat and you've got to have tinsel this is true so i think i look suitably christmasy that's it i'm in charge of the costumes today it's He's a little in charge it's a little bit like a production of of a show or maybe a pantomime ah <laughs> pantomime now and there's a word i'm going to explain later on it might be a word that you've not come across before pantomime is a word i will be explaining later all will be revealed meanwhile it's mr duncan that's me and mr steve we are both wearing our tinsel the only problem with tinsel mr steve is that yeah. it Ooh. that it tends to itch it's a bit itchy it's itchy but <laughs> we we don't mind that because we will suffer for all your students out there just to make them happy and my goodness what a packed show that we have today we have so many things coming today it's unbelievable I, I cannot even begin to tell you well first of all we are going to go back in time we're going back, back way in back time. in time to 2006 to take a look at my first ever Christmas video on YouTube are e we 11 years ago Mr. Steve is just working out what that would be. Oh, no, I thought you were playing the video. Oh, I see. <laughs> no, I'm That's not what playing. I thought you were doing. Uh, <laughs> I was I was doing a back in time look oh, and I then see. you were going to cut to the video. That didn't work. Never mind. I wasn't sure. <laughs> I thought you'd gone into some sort of trance. I thought you were going to play the video when you said we're going thought, back in time 11 years. I thought you were going to play it at that moment. Yes, we understand now, Steve. <laughs> you don't have to explain it again. We're live. We're definitely live. This is live. I'm not <laughs> sure about alive, <laughs> but we are live on YouTube at the moment. Just to prove it, it is what time is it now? It's 20 minutes past two o'clock. We are here until four o'clock UK time now you are going to do something special for us today because there is a video on my youtube channel uh, reading out the story of a christmas carol a very famous story and it is a story that was written a long time ago by yes. who was it written by charles dickens charles dick a very well-known author and he wrote a lot of stories about periods of time in the past and also he was very good at describing the situation oh, yes. of those who were were not as well off as others and the christmas carol is a very good example of that type of writing isn't it it is and uh, i'm going to be reading some excerpts from that and uh, of course you can see the full version i believe on one of your english lessons yes it's true Am in I fact not correct in fact let me just see if i can find the link i will now put the link into the live chat just to show how amazing he's so clever mr duncan's so clever Let's with all this technology <laughs> wait there it, it might not work yet <laughs> save your applause till afterwards <laughs> let's just see okay so i've put the link so the link to my Christmas Carol video is now in the live chat and of course it is underneath this video as well so if you want to watch the full version you can watch it but Mr. Steve not today, yet though no not yet don't watch course. it yet 
don't watch it yet no we're here now doing this live watch it later but of course we are going to listen to mr steve reed we are going to listen to him reading out some excerpts from charles dickens a christmas carol in just a few moments time oh <gasps> i can't wait for that also, it's quite scary isn't it mr duncan it's a bit of a christmas a, ghost story it's a christmas ghost story about uh, yes well, well, well we'll have we'll talk more about that later when you want me to read the first passage what were you saying mr duncan that sounds like a good idea um also we're going to talk about our childhood christmas present so mr steve and myself we will be sharing some memories of our christmases from the past happy when, memories when we were just little children and we're going to show you some of the gifts that we received and i believe mr steve has something very special to show us he's going to get something out and he's going to show us something very special from his childhood is that true that is correct i well we'll talk about more about that later i want to give the game away don't give the game away don't give the game away <laughs> just yet so first of all <laughs> i believe we've had quite a few christmas cards yes well i did show some of the christmas cards that i'd received last week yeah we've had more and uh, we've had a lot more since then we are so popular so many i don't know where to put them up we, we are so popular i can't believe it how can we be so popular actually we've had less than last year but never mind i think it, that was the snow though i think when we yes. had all that snow the other week i think it slowed everything down that's what we'll say do you yes. want me to show some of these christmas cards let's have a look Mr. at some Duncan. of the lovely christmas cards we received some more look at all this lot that's on top of the ones that I showed last year. I haven't counted them yet. Last week. Uh, last week. What did I say? Last year. <laughs> last year. Last week. Well, they're themed. I've noticed. I've put these into a theme order. OK. Uh, because there are certain themes that come with Christmas cards. The first is food. So here's one uh, that uh, has figgy pudding on the front. Figgy pudding. Figgy pudding. Which figgy. is christmas pudding ah okay so figgy there pudding is the is the old-fashioned name for christmas pudding it is made oh. from made from the uh the figs which is a fruit uh these days they don't tend to put figs in christmas pudding they tend to put dried fruits like saltars and raisins but traditionally it was made from uh, dried figs so there's a nice christmas pudding which has uh brandy sauce on it which is a traditional sauce that you have with Christmas pudding. So that's a food theme. I've only had one that's got a food theme this year. Figs are very good for, for, for people who have difficulty going to the toilet. They are very good for you. Yes, so the turkey is going to block you up and the, and the figgy pudding is going to help you get rid of the turkey uh, a few, <laughs> few hours later. So the turkey gives you constipation and the figgy pudding helps Gives it all escape diarrhea right anyway we're already talking about poo oh my goodness right okay so the next theme is nice street scenes oh. and pictures of houses all covered in snow and ice here's a nice one a very nice one look at that nice scenes of of, of snow and uh, frost christmas trees people all walking around this is a very expensive card that looks like a very pricey one is that is that from from our special friends look what it says on the back it says handmade oh my goodness that must be expensive that That's was expensive made. we've got a ribbon on there so i know who this is from they always send very nice cards is that is that brenda it could well be is it brenda and peter look at this one here's here's another sort of house theme look at look at what that card is saying it's, it's saying that door is open it's saying come up the steps and just come into our house because everyone's welcome it's christmas we're going to have a lovely time it's that's welcoming us in look at those lanterns lanterns on the path leading up to the house it's a very lovely inviting door. scene very that's inviting welcoming friends neighbors relations round for christmas that's a similar one 
the doors open it looks very festive yes nice uh, i've always wondered why red is associated with christmas have you ever wondered that i don't know is it is it to do with father christmas wearing a red <laughs> cloak well i'm not yes, quite but, sure but, but, but uh, yes but christmas isn't really about father christmas there is a, a slightly older story connected with christmas but i've just wondered why why red why why have we ended up with with red as being a theme everywhere so you have the holly with the red berries you have red yes. clothing red hats uh, <laughs> everything seems to be red we always associate certain birds such as the robin uh, with the robin with yes winter well. and christmas so it's very interesting it's, it's strange you should say robins because Ooh. uh the other well going back to what you said about why we have lots of red at christmas yeah of course it could be to do with red berries couldn't it in the winter but it could be to do with going back to the original story is it to do with the blood of christ maybe i don't know who knows maybe someone can google this and uh, and tell us the answer well, it's the birth isn't it i know but you know you know what i'm saying are, are you are you sort of talking about you know sort of <laughs> it might be to do with that but i don't i think it's to do with red berries in the winter oh yeah maybe and, maybe uh, well because because giving birth can be very messy it can be so, so maybe can, the red so can dying in maybe a the red way. symbolizes the the, the 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 yucky gooey mess that you get when you give birth to a baby i don't know moving on there's a nice robin <laughs> on the front of the card changing the subject robins are always associated with christmas uh because they're out in the cold you can see them against the snow so they look very festive uh there's another robin one and ah oh. that's two robins and look what's inside this one <gasps> Money. money money's inside this card now you're talking 20 pounds goodness me who, from who? my mother is thank you very much mummy so for that nice card is that 10 pounds each no it's all for me oh <laughs> right sorry about that there we go there's two uh penguins no they're not they're puffins puffins ah just testing you mr duncan no you weren't testing you no you weren't testing oh me. just seeing if you're gonna fall into the trap penguins those lovely puffins <laughs> with their red beaks they're not penguins <laughs> <laughs> they've got red legs there's a, and they're in the snow there's a penguin behind you so that's quite uh, there is indeed i've never seen one with a dog on the front before. oh i know who this is from this but is from uh, my friend my friend sean and also nina yes come to visitors right <laughs> that's a very subtle hint from steve there okay oh and there's another one oh there's look. another bird now I think one. I think that might be uh, uh, it might be a coal tit but it also might be a long tail tit it's very hard to tell from that angle it's puffed out to keep itself warm yeah, isn't that lovely it is and that's actually a charity card that one's from cancer research so somebody has uh, bought this card knowing that a few pence uh, a small proportion of the money that they've spent on the card will go towards uh, research cancer research so I think we mentioned this last week that charity uh, cards are quite common uh, in this country mm. because it makes people feel a bit better about about spending money on cards and of some course. of the money is going towards charity yes yes I think we've ascertained that <laughs> there we go there's the next theme father Christmas of course oh. appears on many cards there he is putting presents by the tree so that when you come down in the morning there's the surprise that's just, a small one I'm patiently Christmas waiting on. Mr Steve for, for Santa Claus to empty his sack under my tree well, you're going to wait a long time for that. I can't wait. There we go. <laughs> that looks familiar. That's a that's a, a, a sort of a Christmas jumper yes. because that's something that's come into uh, into popularity over the last few years is people buying Christmas themed jumpers for Christmas with all sorts of things on them like Christmas puddings or or Christmas trees or bright lights. So uh, when you're having an office party they often have a day when you where you wear your christmas sweater uh and uh, if, that's an example of one there in fact if you position that carefully you, you can actually put your head on it there there we go that's it 
Can you see? Uh, yeah, that, that's that's almost working. Not quite, because you know now, now it's disappearing. You see? How about that? Uh, you, you have to move back. You have to move back and then bring the jumper forward. <laughs> Let's <laughs> abandon that. <laughs> Just look at the thumbnail for this video. So so that's what we've done on there. You see? Uh, oh, okay. Then what's this? This looks like Santa Claus and Santa Claus and a snowman. The, the snowman doesn't look very happy. He looks a bit reluctant. <laughs> he looks like. Uh, I think Santa Claus might be kidnapping the snowman. He doesn't he doesn't look very happy. Tom Smith has probably expensive but we don't know. Now some people like to hand make their Christmas cards. Yes. These are all ones purchased from the shops. Uh but some people like to make their own cards and here's an example of a card that somebody has made themselves and sent to us. Three Christmas trees on it. It's handmade. There we go. They've stuck all these things on, uh, especially for us. And that's from uh, uh, some friends of ours. And they always make their own cards every year. And See? so they've gone to the effort of sitting down and probably spending half an hour making that card instead of. So what that says is you're worth having something that I've spent time making myself on as yeah. opposed to just getting one out of a out of a box and uh, and putting your name on so if you get a, a handmade card that shows that they probably think something of you that's it and you know what they say they say that th it's the thought that counts oh you've just ruined one of my one of my christmas phrases for later well you can you can <laughs> use it again don't worry <laughs> don't worry just because i've used it it doesn't mean that no human being on the planet can, ev can never use it again don't that's worry a nice about silvery that. one Look don't worry that. steve it's quite nice <laughs> from tesco who is that that handmade card from? That was from uh, Pete and Sid. Oh, Pete and Sid, Pete our and friends, Sid. our friends who used to live in Plymouth, and then they went to move to France, and yes. then they moved back here. Oh, hello I to Pete and Sid. Just in case you're watching, they're now living in Cornwall. Oh. We're waiting for the invite. Yeah, I still they're waiting for one as well. <laughs> <laughs> we have a lot of invites to send out next year. That one's a, a minimalist card. There we go. Just uh, a little. <laughs> <laughs> that, that looks like it was drawn by a <laughs> drawn yes, by a child it does looks like it was drawn by a child created by oh hang on a minute this is this is in fact a handmade card oh. created funny you should say that this actually is i've just looked on the back i thought it was a, a commercially available card it isn't it was in fact my, oh, i've just realized it's my uh, manager at work and his son has created this card. He's created the card and himself. And printed it off. Oh, my goodness. So uh, this is going to raise funds for a primary school. A, a lot of a lot Cheshire. of charity cards this year. So there we go. So it looks like it was uh, designed and, uh, uh, and uh, drawn by a child. It was. You see, I have a very good eye for art, especially <laughs> I want to say terrible art. <laughs> Sometimes as well, we've received two cards here. They're very nice cards. This is an expensive handwritten, handmade card. Look at that. Or hand finished, I should say, not handmade, hand finished. Isn't that beautiful? Someone has sent that to us. Someone has sent, no, well, no, you see. What they've done is they've sent it to the previous occupants of this house. What? Yes. That's impossible. We've been living here for five years. So what that means <laughs> is, and there's a, we've had two cards that are addressed to this house but to the previous occupants because they obviously <laughs> haven't uh, haven't had the the, the address update for, from the people that left wherever they moved to they didn't send uh, the these two people here their new address so all so i can <laughs> conclude from that is is that they are probably unliked and these 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 oh, people really? that are sending these christmas cards don't even realize that they are they are actually despised because they haven't been given the the, the new address so we've been here for five years at this house and there are five still years. there are still christmas cards coming for the previous owners of the house this so, one here is written written about uh written five or six lines about what's been going on in their lives in the last year which is what people often do in christmas cards they write you a little what they call a round robin well, can i just ask why are you sitting in that strange way i just feel like i shall go back and relax relax in your chair relax you, look you spent the whole of this year complaining about having no chair and now you have a chair you're not even using it properly i'm on the edge of my seat 
because I'm excited. That's what they say, isn't it? If you're excited, you're, you're, you're on the, the edge of your seat. You're the only one that is. <laughs> <laughs> you're the only one. That's a very expensive card, and it wasn't even addressed to us. Hey, Steve. M yes, Mr. Duncan. Do you want to go back in time? If it makes me look younger. Okay. Yes. The thing that you did earlier. <laughs> we're, go we're going to do. We're oh, going okay. We're right. Going we're going to do again. Okay. We're going to go back in time. We are going to go way back in time to two thousand and six. We're going back eleven years. Have you done it yet? To Christmas Day. Christmas Day in China, two thousand and six. How exciting! It's Mr. Duncan's Christmas message. Hello, welcome. Uh, this is Mr. Duncan here in China on Christmas Day. It's now nine o'clock in the evening on Christmas Day, the 25th of December, 2006. I have just returned from the big Christmas party here in Baotou. Uh, every year the government here in Baotou gives a very special party for all the foreign workers who are here working hard. Uh, so tonight I went there and we had a good time. They asked me to sing the song as usual. They always ask, Mr. Duncan, can you sing the song? So I sang, I sang two songs. I sang um, Jingle Bells, Dashing Through the Snow, uh, you know, that one, you know, One Horse Open Sled, all that sort of stuff. And also I sang a Chinese song, Ni Wen Wa Ai, Ni Shen Wa Ai Ni Chi Fen. Okay, uh, down to business now. Uh, I won a prize tonight, uh, Jiang Wei. Jiang Wei, look at, uh, let's have a look at my big bag, first of all. The bag. This is my bag that I, I was presented with tonight, uh, with all of the, the good things inside. Uh, for my singing, I won this amazing prize. Look, it's a spiky haired, short wearing, red t shirt, the crazy thing. Uh, something to do with the Beijing Olympic Games. One of the. Hello, I'm, I'm, I'm Mr. Thinky from the Olympic Games. Does this have a name? Does he have a name? I think so, but I'm not sure what, what it is. What's his name? Okay, we will call him Fred for now. So this is Fred, my new friend. I want him tonight at the Foreigners Christmas Party. Okay, Fred, go over there. Bye-bye. What have I got here? <gasps> oh! It's a... I think it's a pig. Let's have a look. Is it a pig? Our survey said... It's a pig! I want a lovely... Look, isn't that beautiful? A lovely... Ooh, a lovely pig. Uh, because, of course, next year, 2007, is Year of the Pig. So that's nice. So that's my uh, little gift from Baotou government. A, a porcelain pig uh, for putting money in. Okay. Uh, oh, I have more gifts. Here's another present. Thank you, Mr. Jiang Wei. Ooh, look at this, another present. This is a Santa Claus. Now, this is from one of my students' parents. Can you believe it? Look at this. Wow, this is pretty classy. A present for Mr. Duncan. Another gift. It's a red box. But what is inside the red box? Let's have a look. Okay, oh, sellotape. To break open the cellar tape, open the box, and it's something. Oh, it's it's made of glass. Look at this. Whoa, it's a snake, a small glass snake. Do you know why? Do you know why it's a glass snake? Yes, of course. Why, Mr. Jiang Wei? Mr. Duncan was born in the year of a snake. My birth year in the Chinese horoscope is the year of the snake. So you are supposed to be a cobra. I'm supposed to be a cobra. A cobra? Yeah, because in Chinese the cobra means a, a snake with a pair of glasses.
Those are my presents. Happy Christmas and a very merry new year to you. I hope you have a good uh, Arling Ling Chi and I hope you have a good weekend. I hope you have a good week. Have a happy life. Live long and prosper, my friends. <laughs> so there it was back in time oh my goodness all the way back to 2006 some people saying oh it's so nice to see a very young mr duncan <laughs> yes <laughs> that was <laughs> believe it or not that was actually 11 years ago a big hello to kien marie bluesbird and also bella marie again yes the cobra the snake was given to me because i was born in the year of the snake in the chinese zodiac that is the reason why it's sunday afternoon it's christmas eve here in the uk and quite likely where you are as well if you are ahead of my time then maybe you are going to start celebrating Christmas Day before us. So if Christmas Day arrives where you are, maybe you are watching in Japan or maybe in New Zealand or Australia, where I'm pretty sure it is already Christmas Day. So if you are watching in a in a time zone that has celebrated Christmas Day arriving already, please let me know thank you very much for all of your lovely messages today as mentioned earlier we are going to read some excerpts from a very famous story a christmas carol by charles dickens and here is the first part now read quite nicely by mr steve to describe Ebenezer Scrooge as mean is, to say the least, a gross understatement. Scrooge is what you might call a miser, a tight-fisted businessman who does not take kindly to parting with his money, a gentleman who lives frugally and prefers to keep himself to himself. Since his long-term business partner Jacob Marley had died, Scrooge preferred to work alone. Well, that is not entirely true. He had help in the shape of Bob Cratchit, who worked for Scrooge as a clerk. Cratchit is a humble family man and devoted husband and father to five children, the youngest of whom is Timothy, or, as he is more commonly known, Tiny Tim. Little Timothy is a sickly child who has to walk using a crutch. More often than not, Tiny Tim can be seen being carried around high on his devoted father's shoulders. And that is the end of the first part. So another excerpt from A Christmas Carol coming a little bit later on. Thank you very much, Steve. That was very beautifully read. My pleasure. Out apparently i've had some some interesting theories about why red is very popular during christmas and apparently one one person has written to say that it it was actually created by coca-cola now i don't think that 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 right. is necessarily accurate another person has written to right. say that it ha it refers to the apple that was was bitten into by adam and eve we want the definitive answer what is the correct answer coca-cola has got something to do with christmas i think they've sort of had something to do with the uh, sort of commercialization of christmas i think but whether it's to do with the red i don't know i thought it was to do with the red berries the holly berries but that might uh, be a bit too simplistic yes it's very so, interesting uh, uh, and of course um santa claus is based on a real person saint nicholas who who was in the habit of wearing red robes so maybe yes. there is a connection there so i think this is what i think i think there is a little bit of everything here so i think over the years the 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 association of red with christmas has has slowly developed and of course coca-cola hijacked 
Christmas by by making their adverts very loud and very bright so most people now associate commercials at Christmas time definitely with coca-cola I think so something else you wanted to show us there Steve yes, yes. Are, are these Christmas cards of course came in the post and we put uh, stamps on letters on envelopes uh, or envelopes if you want to pronounce it that way and uh, so I've just got a variety of different stamps that people have put on their Christmas cards to us and uh, some of them are Christmas themed some of them aren't so some people have bought special Christmas themed one this one is just a standard second class post stamp there's the Queen with the Queen on so that's quite boring but second, look at this one but here the second class by the way is is slower it's slower yes there's first class stamps or second class stamps so first class and, stamps uh, will will make sure that your letter gets to the person the next day the next day if you post it before 12 o'clock second class is kind of a couple of days maybe mm. even three days at this time of the year it could be a week so what about this one you i have to put this one really close to the lens that's is it. it focusing pull it back slightly that's it that's it it's, it's pulling in now uh, yeah, that looks like a. Is it two snowmen? It's two snowmen. You can't really tell because of the postmark. The Frank on it, yes. <laughs> it's been stamped to make sure you can't re. Those lines over there, they put those on to make sure you can't reuse the stamp. Can't uh, use the stamp again. Here's one with a, a sort of a religious theme. Yes, you're going away from the mic, by the way. Religious theme! Oh. Here's a religious theme! Okay. <laughs> you don't have to get so close though don't worry don't worry steve the camera can see mother and baby <laughs> it's just a blur is it well let me describe it to you then that must be mary uh with baby jesus let's have another look that i believe that is by do you know who it's by tell us mr duncan oh i thought you was going to tell us you're showing it to us Here's a non Christmas. Oh, oh, oh. sorry. <laughs> who, who is the painting by? It's probably Da Vinci. It is Leonardo Da Vinci. I, I knew that. I see. I wanted you to tell me. No, I wanted you to tell me. You were showing it to me. <laughs> well, sometimes, of course, you get things which are, you're going to talk about this later. Christmas things that appear at Christmas but yeah, aren't sit, necessarily sit, Christmas. Can themes. you sit back in your chair? I'm, uh, I'm kind He's of telling me what to do now because because <laughs> you. <laughs> oh my goodness right here is one that is a christmas stamp that's been sent at christmas but it's nothing to do with christmas at all that's but it. has become associated with christmas and it's what do you want me to do with that i can we can see it can you yes <laughs> this is high definition baby <laughs> so so the, yes that looks like r2d2 it's a star wars stamp for christmas yeah because of course star wars is now associated with christmas because every christmas they release a new star wars movie and the new star wars movie has just been released although it would appear that the fans are split over whether the film is good or not i haven't seen it yet we're going to see it we'll probably see it on your birthday steve in february so we'll probably see it just as it's leaving the cinema <laughs> just as it's being pulled when there's no one there and we can't be disturbed that's it I, I don't like going to the cinema i'll be honest this is this is one of my general hates of society he gets very upset going to the cinema and then there's people around you making lots of noise they're they're, they're eating and rustling paper where the sweets are talking and talking and checking their mobile phone messages so I don't really like going to the cinema. It isn't my most favourite activity, if I was honest, to be honest with he you. He gets very stressed about people <laughs> disturbing him when he's watching a film in the cinema. It, it might sound as if I have a general hatred of all human beings, but I don't. It just sounds like it. Just most. <laughs> he doesn't. Not you, obviously. He loves all of you. I love my viewers. Definitely. <laughs> What's just, next, Mr. Duncan? I, I just don't like noisy people in cinemas. What's next, Mr. Duncan? Is that your stamps? 
that's the stamps they're all done oh that's nice so let's have a look quickly at our mystery idioms we have some mystery idioms yes it's business as usual so there are mystery idioms to look at if you would like to try and guess what the mystery idioms are here they come right now here is the first mystery idiom can you see it on your screen unless of course you have your eyes closed or you are listening from another room there is today's first mystery idiom but what is it just say what you see and there is the second one <laughs> I'm sure I'm going to get complaints about this one I don't know why I feel as if I'm going to get lots of complaints about this particular image that I've created so these are two well-known English expressions but what are they if you think you know what they are please let me know and Steve has some idioms coming a little bit later on don't you I do indeed I've got a pile of them here you've got a pile have you a pile of idioms that I have prepared um, so that'll be interesting to see what we've got idioms or phrases that are related to to Christmas or presents or buying gifts hmm that sounds good to me so uh, yes I thought that would be relevant and uh, when do you want me to show those well I, <laughs> Mr. D. I, I will I will let you know <laughs> I will say to you please show us the Christmas gift and present idioms I will say something like that so as soon as I hear that as, as soon as you hear that I know to go down onto the table here yeah and start showing them it's very technical what what do you what are you going to say again just remind me again I'm going to say Mr. Steve please show us your present and gift idioms I can remember that. I, I can I can write it down for you if you want. <laughs> <laughs> we have a lot of people on the live chat today. Can you explain the use of baby, for example, when you use baby speaking to Mr. Steve? Well, baby is kind of a a fun way of just addressing someone. Hey, baby. Hi, baby. So baby just means another person, but it's a fun way of addressing someone. Did you address me as baby? I'm not sure, actually. I did don't I, remember that. Did I address you as baby today? Well, let's remember. do it now. Hey, Mr. Steve. Hey, baby. How are you doing? I'm fine, baby. Mr. Duncan, how are you? And all the babies watching out there. Hey, baby. Of course, quite often it's used when you're addressing a, a female. Although maybe nowadays it isn't. Maybe nowadays if you said, hi, baby, to a woman, she would probably slap your face or maybe you will end up on the news headlines or well, the slightly more comical version babes hi babes hmm I think babes normally has a little bit more of a, a naughty connotation Ooh. babes anyway I don't remember you calling me babe baby baby I, you, I haven't called you baby today baby if you I call someone a cry came. baby it means that they cry a lot yes I remember you calling me babe this we'll have to, when we watch it again later we'll, we will have to watch out for this bit <laughs> see if can you call me can babe you believe the first time ever no oh. yeah is that I mean, it yeah. have you stopped you it? <laughs> <laughs> can you believe after this live stream we sit and watch it again just just to make sure that that it, it wasn't it wasn't as bad as we thought it was <laughs> we watch little bits we don't watch all of it i mean if we watch all of it how sad would that be mr S duncan steve gets up at the end and applauds he's actually clapping at the end to himself <laughs> we don't really sit there and watch it do you want to see mr steve on the stage here is steve what playing the part of scrooge and there he is there is mr steve as scrooge he appeared in the musical version of a Christmas Carol so there is Steve actually acting on the stage would you like to see another picture of Mr. Steve in Scrooge playing the lead role yes Mr. Steve is an actor he is an actor an actor so Mr. Steve does from time to time appear in shows he also sings and here is another picture of Mr. Steve and here's Mr. Steve looking very serious. Now, this particular picture was taken during the production of Return to the Forbidden Planet. Do you remember that, Steve? 
I do. I didn't know you were going to show pictures, embarrassing pictures. It's not, well, not embarrassing. But, These aren't uh, embarrassing. Why are they embarrassing? This is the amateur stage we're talking here. I'm not a professional. But it looks great. I must admit, I think Steve here is being very modest. He's very good at acting. So there is a picture. This is one of the best things that Steve's done, actually. I, I loved this show. Return to the Forbidden Planet, which is based on, I think it's based on Shakespeare's The Tempest. It is indeed. Ooh. Loosely. And Steve, <laughs> Steve was playing the part of the mad scientist Prospero. I was indeed yes and I, I must admit I was very impressed when you you did this because you had to remember lots and lots of Shakespearean dialogue and one of the hardest things to convey on stage is actually Shakespeare I think it's one of the hardest things to actually put across it was great fun it uh, it was sort of Shakespeare uh, uh, with music uh, from uh, uh, the rock era of the 60s <laughs> 50s and 60s it's music. a very it's a very interesting but combination of these things but there are many shows that have this combination of well-known songs and also themes there is another one called the rocky horror show which is very similar it has a very similar theme it uses rock music but also the theme is based on old horror movies so there are lots of shows like this but i have to say steve you are you are quite quite an actor in fact you are going to prove what a good actor you are right now because we're going to have in a moment the next part of a Christmas Carol Dibby dibby doo, we are live on Christmas Eve. Tomorrow it's Christmas Day. Yes, it is. I hope you have a super duper Christmas. I hope you get what you want. Have you written your letter to Santa Claus? Have you told him what you want? And more importantly, have you been nice? Because Santa Claus doesn't come to naughty people. He definitely doesn't. Well, that's what my mum and dad told me anyway. Here is the second part, the second excerpt from William Shake not William Shakespeare, Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol. After a hard day at the bank speculating and investing, Ebenezer headed home through the cold streets of London. It is the day before Christmas and everyone is full of joy. Well, almost everyone. Scrooge meets his nephew, who kindly offers a place at his Christmas lunch the next day. Scrooge bluntly refuses the offer with a curt, Good afternoon! Merry Christmas, Uncle Scrooge, chirped the nephew. Merry Christmas, bah humbug, barked Scrooge. Beggars and charity collectors line the streets, holding out their hands to Scrooge, who in turn pushes them aside with a despising grunt. Are there no workhouses for these people? I say, let them die and reduce the surplus population. As he continues his way home, Scrooge passes many people, including a gas lamp lighter, a theatre promoter, and finally an old blind woman. They all receive a scolding as in turn they encounter Scrooge. The old woman replying with a warning to Scrooge to change his ways or bad things will happen to him. Of course, Scrooge ignores these words of warning and continues on his way home. Oh, so that's Ooh, it. The second starting to get a little nasty. Yes, wait until the ghosts appear. Oh, the ghosts! No, Mr. Duncan. Now that's acting. <laughs> oh, oh, Mr. Oh, Steve. I'm getting into it now. It's feeling all Christmassy. It's three o'clock, everyone. 
Three o'clock? We've been doing this for an hour already. But something special is now happening because if I'm not mistaken, I think it is now Christmas Day in Japan. So I think th uh, three o'clock UK time is actually midnight in Japan. So can wow. I say Merry Christmas to everyone watching in Japan? If you are watching at the moment, yes. maybe maybe you are celebrating the arrival of Christmas Day. Is there anyone in Japan watching now? And maybe even Vietnam as well. I think maybe Vietnam also might also be celebrating how Christmas about Day. How about Australia? They can't be far off. Oh, Australia, Australia. are way ahead. Way They're, ahead. Th they celebrated Christmas Day many hours ago. Is there anyone from Australia watching right now? Anybody from Australia that would be watching so exciting. now? Exciting. Any? I think maybe it, it it is about midday now in Australia. Uh, maybe no, actually no. It's afternoon now in Australia. So about maybe. Oh no, actually no. It's the opposite. It's actually three o'clock in the morning now they're all asleep they're all asleep in bed so they've already had their christmas day so merry christmas to those who are now seeing the christmas day in oh one or two people are now saying it as well on the live chat let's have a quick look shall we yes. let's have a look at the live chat there it is yes lots of people are we celebrating Merry Christmas f Japan and also Asia from Rosa. Merry Christmas to Japan. Wow. Thank Merry you Nick Christmas. Thank you Nicole. <laughs> so people from Japan are now saying happy Christmas. Apparently now it's 2 just after 2 o'clock in the morning in Australia. What the study from Australia live watching you right now. There's Bella hello Bella that's fantastic yes are you having a, are you having a Christmas party also Daniela is here saying thanks guys someone thinks we are like twins we look like twin boys <laughs> thank you <laughs> thank you very much for that that might be one of the nicest things anyone's ever said to us are they gonna say twinks <laughs> uh, no I don't think anyone's ever described us as twinks maybe when we were 18 but i didn't mm. know you then <laughs> you didn't no you, you didn't know <laughs> me then we had a lovely time last week didn't we? we we had something very lovely last week and i'm going to show you now what we had here it is oh look at that the table is set because last week mr steve and also me mr duncan we went to the local cafe for our early Christmas lunch. So this is a Christmas lunch that we had last week, didn't we, Steve? Yes, we did. We had we went for for a starter. It was a three four course meal. Yeah. And it was incredibly good value for money. And there is Steve. Steve is just cutting his roll. He's going to put some butter on his roll. Oh, OK, he's he's broken his roll. So now Steve is putting some butter almost trying to. It looks like the butter is is hard. Is it frozen? It was it was quite hard butter. That's often the the failing of of, uh, of restaurants when they give you butter. It's come straight out of the fridge. Yes. And it's too hard. And that's my that's my that was the starter, which is a winter vegetable broth. You look very happy there. So there vegetable is Steve broth. There is Steve about to enjoy his starter and there is mine you can see there is some soup there so, but, but this is a kind of very weak very watery soup called broth that's right broth oh and there i am i'm i'm also waiting to eat my bread roll so there i am eating my food we were having an early christmas meal last week so we went along to our local cafe called the copper kettle I better give them a mention and there I am eating my lovely brown roll and also my soup as well or should I say broth broth it's a it's a sort of old-fashioned word for soup I always think there's there's also another one called gruel isn't there Steve there is yes gruel oh That's that Scrooge eats gruel yes then there we are about to pull our Christmas cracker one two three go on pull pull 
Oh, ooh, there we go. So we are pulling our Christmas crackers, and there is our meal. <gasps> the star of the show. And there you can see some vegetables. There are some sprouts, some carrots, and also some cabbage as well. So that's what we had for our Christmas lunch last week. Isn't that lovely? Look at the turkey. Turkey, potatoes, gravy lots and lots of things on the table and also some cranberry sauce the dark pot is cranberry sauce and also bread sauce and there is mr steve's meal <gasps> look at that he's eaten everything he's eaten all of it it's all gone that I'm was a surprised. delicious it was delicious it was a delicious meal wasn't it it was lovely and very good value but don't tell them that and now steve is eating his christmas pudding look at that wow he's almost finished already you like christmas pudding don't you i love christmas pudding i like anything with dried fruit in it personally i don't i don't like christmas pudding at all so i didn't have any christmas pudding we're going to see what i had what did i have I had some lemon drizzle some lemon cake so instead of Christmas pudding because I don't like it I had some lemon cake instead with with some ice cream on the side and as you can see I am really really enjoying that <laughs> I'm just saying hello to the other guests I'm filling my face I'm putting the cake into my mouth and that was a lovely meal and tomorrow of course we are having another Christmas meal aren't we Steve we are which I am going to cook and uh, we're going to talk about that later I think we may even show that in a separate video it, if we have time I will try I will try my best to to maybe show today some of the vegetables I did mention some of the vegetables that you have during Christmas dinner of course you have turkey we have turkey for tomorrow so I apologize to all those vegetarians but we will be having turkey tomorrow also vegetables as well Steve lots of vegetables oh yes but the one thing we always do every year we always put too much on the plate far too much we pile the plates high with food and uh, then struggle to finish it and then there's no room left in your stomach for the Christmas pudding and I've probably eaten lots of twiglets and crisps beforehand as well to keep me going cooking the Christmas dinner is a very time-consuming uh, thing to do mm. uh, it literally takes hours and you can't really leave the kitchen you can't leave the cooker because you've got to think and time everything so you've got to put the turkey in that takes probably three or four hours but you've got to time it so that all the vegetables are ready at the same time you've got to make the gravy you've got to roast the potatoes and they've all got to be ready uh, at the same time otherwise it's all ruined and it's oh. quite time consuming and stressful we, we are cheating slightly because oh. we haven't got a full turkey this year we've only got part of a turkey true so so hopefully it won't take three hours to cook it, it might only take about maybe one hour and 40 minutes hopefully but that's what we're doing tomorrow and of course yes you have to stuff the turkey yes marie marie says what do you stuff inside the turkey well normally we put a special seasoned paste inside the turkey called stuffing yes it's made from breadcrumbs and herbs mm. and uh, the common one is sage sage and onion stuffing so it's breadcrumbs a herb called sage and uh, an onion and you you mix that all up into it into a, like a paste as you say and that goes inside the turkey and uh, then you you stick it you stick it all inside the turkey you stick it in there in the space it. that's left behind by the uh, the intestines sounds revolting <laughs> uh, but it's, it's empty the the turkey is empty inside so you you stuff everything inside along with a few sausages some people like to put a sausage inside the turkey but 
little chipolata sausages. <laughs> but anyway, we're giving we 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 won't be able to do that to this turkey because it's not a full turkey. It's only like half a turkey, so there'll be nothing to stuff. No. Uh, but never mind. I'm It'll sure we can be very nice. I'm sure we can find something to stuff. I'm sure we'll find something. So we're going to look now at some of our childhood toys some of our okay. christmas memories and there are lots of them now do you remember mr steve cast your mind back way back in time do -do 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 again <laughs> well we're going way back before 2006 we're going way back to the 1970s <coughs> the 1970s when you were just a child and you were going yeah. to talk about some of your gifts so so tell us about your first Christmas gift Christmas gift I've got many happy memories about Christmas gifts and one of them is this don't don't show us the book yet pardon don't show us the book yet what do you want me to show the, the, first didn't you have a list yes okay I've got a list here there it is <laughs> rewind so one of the what i would say the best christmas present i i always like things to do i always like presents that uh, where i was making something uh or experimenting with something or had something to do so um for example a chemistry set i remember my mummy and daddy buying me a chemistry set when i was quite young so lots of experiments to do with test tubes and and bunsen burners mm. and uh mixing different chemicals together d getting different colors getting things to burn smoke to come off i used to love anything like that because i used to like love chemistry and doing chemistry experiments isn't it true that once you you almost blew up your house you you several you times you almost caused a large explosion well my father uh showed me how to make gunpowder <laughs> Yes, that's uh, that's a very responsible thing to do with with a child. In those days, it was something you passed down from father to son. I'm not quite sure, but uh, you you passed down the <laughs> the ability to the blow ability to, to blow things up, make explosives. But you used to be able to walk into the local chemist and buy all the ingredients for making gunpowder, uh, which was quite uh, quite interesting. I don't think you'd be able to do that today. And I think if uh, if you went to school and told the teachers your father had shown you how to make explosives, uh, you'd probably find yourself living in a home somewhere. You'd probably well, be parted from your parents. Well, I think if you did it now, you'd end up in prison. I know. They'd be shipping you off to uh, Guantanamo Bay. <laughs> I know, and uh, father would be spending the rest of his time behind bars. You would never see daylight again. But you just wander into the local chemist and say, oh, yes, uh, can I have this, this and this? I won't say what the ingredients are. <laughs> and they'd say, no problem. <laughs> are have you making gunpowder? Have a good day. And off you would go. But yes, it's true. Happy uh, exploding. I nearly, I nearly set fire to my bedroom. I nearly blew up the garage. And in fact, I broke the neighbor's windows once. Uh, by making uh, an ex a large explosion in the garden uh, and uh, it was very dangerous the things I used to do when I was younger I used to have a friend a couple of friends and we used to like like uh, mixing chemicals together he made nitroglycerin once in, you, in his shed you were like you were like tiny terrorists we were I would have been recruited these days into uh, <laughs> certain organizations <laughs> I've got all the skills <laughs> okay then so well. a chemistry set th that chemistry set really led me on to making bombs well not bombs as such just explosives we used I, to I, i'm feeling as if any moment w this house is going to be raided <laughs> <laughs> there are probably people monitoring this and, and, and uh, you know like the like the uh, the secret service in in america are probably uh, listening into us now Goodness I know me. the things you used to do back in the 1970s back in the 90 the, those good old days the 1970s when everything was lovely so how about you mr duncan have you got uh, uh, a memorable christmas present i have quite a few actually uh, one of Lucky my you. first ever gifts bought for me one of the first gifts ever given to me by my family was a matchbox motorway do you remember those 
I don't remember the, the matchbox motorway it was a sort of kind of a, a sort of car track and, and and then lots of little cars would run around round and round in circles was it like scale elect scale electric yes very similar to that but uh, an earlier sort of uh, not the same version it was it was actually quite complex to set up oh very complex but I do remember one of the first ever Christmas presents bought for me I think maybe in around maybe 1970 or maybe 71 so the very early 70s it might even be 1969 1969 or 1970 so this was bought for me given to me uh, at Christmas time many many years ago oh do you have another one Steve ah uh, yes I or oh, I wanted a cassette recorder ah. uh, for Christmas and I pleaded and begged with my parents uh, to have a, a cassette recorder which were they were very expensive it was it was new technology then because up until that point the only form of recording devices that you had was these big reel-to-reel -reel tape machines mm. uh, with tape on these big reels and the, the machine was about that big but then they invented a miniaturized version of tape recording called the cassette tape and then you had these very small recorders and i wanted one so much because i used to be very interested in electronics and uh, and recording and things like that and i can still remember that to this day and i'm sure a lot of people out there who celebrate christmas or have christmas or even birthday presents if you want something that much and then you get it and you're not expecting it i woke up very early opened this big box which was in a big stocking christmas stocking at the foot of my bed and it was this cassette recorder and i've never been so excited in all my life well you're not going to believe this but this is something that we have in common because one of my early christmas presents was also <laughs> can you believe it a cassette, a cassette a ca recorder a cassette recorder even we were yes. going to say it together then no <laughs> no we definitely didn't so you've got a picture of that have you yes there's a cassette recorder now on the screen and i also had one of these given to me now this gift that i received changed my whole life because of receiving this i started making little shows on my cassette recorder little pretend shows so i i used to pretend that i was in a studio and i was presenting a show and i used to do funny stories and funny voices so this was way back it must have been around about 1976 1977 oh so i would have been about 12 i think i was about 12 or 13 at the time when i received my cassette recorder so <laughs> because of your that, age away <laughs> sorry giving your age away everyone knows my age <laughs> I don't think there's anyone watching at the moment who doesn't know how old I am so it doesn't bother me to be honest I'm I couldn't care less I'm only joking I couldn't care you look 20 years younger than you actually are <laughs> thanks Steve so because of buying or having this cassette recorder given to me uh, I became interested in talking I became interested in broadcasting I became interested in presenting and that's one of the reasons why I'm here now doing this. So from that small gift, we have it's this. Made you the star you are today, Mr. Duncan. Uh, I'm not. I'm not sure about being a star, the but premier um, English teacher in the whole wide world. Hmm. Maybe. <laughs> and well, may, maybe former, or maybe in the past. No, the king of English. I think that's what we ought to call you. Really, I did once in one of my english lessons i dressed up as the king it was oh. actually one of your costumes mr steve oh right yes i bet that was from the king and i no no oh. the king as in with a crown oh with a crown it was actually when you were in um i think it was in, you were in the the uh, yeoman of the guard could well be yes maybe Gilbert sullivan yes because you were made you were made a lord oh yes as I should be in real life. You have played so many parts in the past. It's great fun. Amdram. In a moment, we are going to have another part of 
the story the famous christmas story a christmas carol by charles dickens that coming very soon another gift from the past mr steve please tell us do you want me to show the book no there, no. there, there are other ones as well okay a plastic craft kit ah yes plastic I, ha I have the picture here of the box i always wanted things to do now i'm going to be honest with you steve i don't remember this this particular toy or this, this was great i don't remember it at all yes you had bottles of bottles of resin and uh, there was a there was a, a craze at the time to uh, encase objects into into plastic and give them as gifts in, into clear plastic resin so you had two bottles you mix the two together and uh, you had these plastic molds uh, and then you would it was quite thick but it would take several hours to set so when you mixed the uh, the, the two together they would then set but then you put something inside like a coin or something pretty and then when it was when it was set rock hard you took it out of the mold and you could give this this as like a paperweight to somebody so, uh, so it, it kind of reminds me of of the 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 prehistoric insects that that were frozen in amber that's right yes that's it you could you could put insects in them <laughs> uh, uh some people did spiders things like that but you would put things like coins or 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 something pretty inside there and, yes i can see the picture a, on the box it, it looks like picture. there are coins and and it looks like maybe yes there are it looks like insects as well in one of them it was quite quite dangerous because this resin was very pungent pungent it had a very strong smell pungent and uh, you you got it all over your hands and everywhere i'm sure it was probably quite poisonous you seem to spend most of your childhood playing with chemicals i i did I, I had a little I had a little laboratory I, I, I called it in, in the garage and I'd be I'd have this chemistry book and I'd be doing all the experiments in there I'm probably full of all sorts of toxic residues residues <laughs> what does residue residue mean? that that's like a leftover something that's left over so after all the other parts have gone there is something still left and that is the residue the residue something that you can't get rid of everything you can't get rid of it all so say you've got a chemical on your skin and you can't get rid of it all there's some left that's the residue okie dokie that's interesting so here's one of my past residual it's from residual repast past christmas gift now this looks like an ipad but it isn't an ipad <laughs> it's it far from an ipad it doesn't it, it is definitely not an ipad although it does look a bit like one this is something called an etch a sketch etch a sketch and this was a very popular toy during the 1970s and it, it was a thing that you could use to draw pictures but as, as long as the pictures were square that was the only limitation of this toy so you could draw anything as long as it was square <laughs> so it was very very hard to draw anything that, that was round or curved so if you drew a car then then the the wheels would have to be square in fact everything was square so <laughs> it was quite limited to, to actually what you could draw or create but, <laughs> yes. but there it is <laughs> so as long as you didn't mind drawing squares all the time um or straight lines you could have hours and hours of straight line fun I'm sure that the designers of Audi cars design all their cars on an etch a sketch. If you notice with Audis, they've, they've always got very straight lines and straight edges. <laughs> I was wondering if, if we were going to talk about cars today. Got to get cars in there somewhere. So we, we're talking about an etch a sketch, and somehow you can actually get cars into that topic. No, I've read that somewhere in a car magazine that all Audis are, that they've been designed on an etch a sketch. Oh, I see, <laughs> because, because they have they have no curves. They've got no curves. It's just straight, straight, straight lines. I see. So there it is. I think I think um, that Steve Jobs, the guy that created the first iPad, I think he stole the idea from etch a sketch. <laughs> that's that's what I think. I think because it does look a bit like an ipad you just sort of shook it didn't you when you finished when you finished there was sand inside so when, when you wanted to get rid of the the drawing your your masterpiece you just shook it you you would shake the box and then the sand would erase 
the image and then you were ready to start again it was all mechanical this is this is what you this is what it, it look, looked like this is what it looked like when you're using an extra sketch this is what it looks like <laughs> it was all mechanical there wasn't a battery you did this uh, or a transistor in sight it was very hard and if you made a mistake you couldn't get rid of it so the mistake had to stay there and then uh, but but it, it was it was fun to use trust me i used to have one for many many years <laughs> they were the in thing as they say the popular thing uh, back in the 70s is it time for the book another <laughs> toy another thing from mr steve's past not the book yet there is another thing is there etch a sketch now we've had that oh no we've had that haven't we oh okay then get because the, i can i can tell that mr steve is really really excited I've you got nothing you can't wait to here. show us okay show us the book then <sighs> I'll, I'll, before i show you the book uh do you know what i was i to this day i remember feeling very guilty because i always used to like have to have something practical to do with christmas presents and one year i i didn't get anything practical and I burst into tears and my parents said why are you crying and I said I haven't got anything to do <laughs> and uh, that was awful really because obviously my parents had gone to a lot of effort to uh, buy me a Christmas present and I must have seemed very ungrateful and I feel guilty to this day for saying that I expect my parents have forgotten about that but never mind right so one year 1970 two 19 1972 that's such a long time ago I, I won't say how old i was i it was christmas but i was in bed ill why why do you keep banging things with flu <laughs> actual real flu i had a high temperature and i was in bed but i had this wonderful book that uh, my parents bought me for christmas and that sustained me sustained the, eh? sustained me kept me going because even though i was ill i was able to bury myself and my imagination in this book because i have a fascination for the the stars and the planets Ooh. and the universe yeah and uh, this was the <laughs> <laughs> so I'm giving this a big I, build up. I feel as if I'm traveling through the universe during this conversation. And uh, this was the book, the very book. Where, where are you going? Is I don't it, know. Where do you want me to go? Just sit back and show us. We can see it. OK. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you think people are watching this on. Do you think people are watching this on a, 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 a one inch screen? I don't know. It's high definition, baby. The book of the universe. OK, then. As it was known back in 1972. What? The universe? Well, what they knew don't, about don't we it. Still in call it. We still call it the universe, don't we? Now, what I meant was what they knew. <laughs> Mr. Duncan. Have they changed? He's being the pedantic. Apparently, the, from now on, the universe will be known as David. David. Or David. Derek. Some people might call it Derek. So we don't say the universe anymore. We say Derek. And look what it says in here. To Stephen. It doesn't say to Mr. Steve. It says to Stephen. Love from Mummy and Daddy. Christmas 1972. For doing so well at school. Oh, I've got the message here. Here it is. Do you want to see the message? There it is. OK. Read it again. A to Stephen. Love from Mummy and Daddy. Christmas 1972. For doing so well at school there it is and there is the actual message from your parents i love the way they, they say mummy and daddy mummy daddy that means that you must have been very young please tuck me into bed mummy were you I'm feeling very tired were you 11 i'm not going to say how old i was i think you were you were 11 years time. old steve was 11. anyway this is full of uh wonderful information about the universe the planets all that is probably most of it's probably still okay today that's okay uh, yes but, i don't think uh, i don't think the universe has changed much since 1972. <laughs> it's a lot bigger now than they thought in 1972. yes but it hasn't changed that much only our our understanding of the universe has changed oh you're being so pedantic mr Duncan. i'm being very fussy and picky and fussy and picky pedantic um oh well, and also the message at the bottom can you read that again if you 
insist mr duncan i that's do my writing at the bottom yes that's mr steve's handwriting there when he was 11. nb note a bene which is uh, latin <laughs> which i think means also does it yes i think it's like in in addition in addition i was in bed with flu this christmas we always spent christmas i noticed we always abbreviated abbreviated it to xmas yes Apparently it comes from, I, I think it might be in a certain country. I want to say Italy, but I don't think it is. But the abbreviation, of course, is cross. Yes. So the X is actually a representation of a cross. So Christmas. So we always received lovely presents at Christmas, but my parents always used to tell me because i think over the as the years have gone by people spend more and more on christmas as each generation uh has you know each new generation seems to spend more and more on christmas my mother uh, delights in telling me that she was very happy just to receive an orange uh or, or a one pence coin or or a few bag of nuts for christmas uh, but of course now everyone expects to have a lot of money spent on them don't but this they? happens steve doesn't it with every generation so every time there's a new generation that comes That's along right. when i was little my parents would always say when i was little we only had some coal they used to put some coal in, in a pillowcase and some oranges just to make it seem as if there was something in there so uh, uh, my parents used to tell me that their christmases were very very i want to say modest so they didn't have expensive gifts given to them no uh, uh, but but we of course were quite spoiled as children even though my family we weren't rich we didn't have much money but my parents were always able to save a little bit and give us some presents at christmas so they always managed to do that uh, uh, unlike mr steve of course who who comes from a very posh family very rich no they weren't we were pretty average i you, would say you used to play croquet on the lawn and you had your own tennis court <coughs> and everybody had one no <laughs> who 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 has a tennis court i i didn't <laughs> i think lots of people did i the, think it's just you Mr. the Duncan. only thing i had as a child to play with were my conkers <laughs> that's all i had to play with i used to spend hours playing with my conkers mm. yeah, and look what it's done for you <laughs> any and more the, presents oh i've got i've got uh, quite a few here so so there is the one i showed you earlier oh yes now imagine picture the scene mr Dun mr steve <laughs> picture the st the scene <laughs> yes a young boy opens his christmas present on christmas day he's excited he tears back the paper and what does he find he finds a lump of coal a train set oh i had the most awesome train set when i was a child from my parents and there is the actual train set the flying scotsman <gasps> a very famous train uh, I think now it's actually in a museum. Oh no, it's still running. They, they they've actually rebuilt it for about the seventh or eighth time. So the Flying Scotsman is actually running again. In fact, it went past here not long ago, didn't it, Steve? This year, the BBC did a special program all about the Flying Scotsman, and it went. It did. It went not far away from where we live. The steam, old-fashioned steam train so there it is there is one of the gifts that i got and i used to spend hours playing with my train set many 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 hours i i used to love my train set so again my parents were, were absolutely brilliant i've said this already I, my my family wasn't wealthy a lot of people think that i was raised by, by millionaires but i wasn't my family had had very little money my, both of my parents worked at, but they would always manage to save some money for the end of the year they always made sure that we had something on christmas day and that is something from my point of view that, that i will always be grateful for so absolutely lovely lovely memories of my 
of my Christmas past have we got any any memories and and, and wonderful gifts memories uh, that, uh, that uh, your viewers are sending in because we'd uh, like to we'd like to have some of those wouldn't we we haven't had many really now oh. I think one of the things of course one of the things that Steve, no one's there one of the things is that not many people celebrate Christmas so not oh. everyone celebrates Christmas in the same way as we do so we've got uh, uh, one more gift to show uh, this is one that my parents bought for me as well not all at the same time by the way all of these presents weren't given during the same Christmas they were over many many years uh, now some children liked to play with Lego whilst other children played with something called Meccano do you remember Meccano Steve I do I had a Meccano set oh me too oh how something wonderful. else something else we have in common so yes i used to play with meccano but i i also had lego as well yes lego has been around for many years a lot of people think that lego is a new thing but lego lego bricks have been around for many many years so when i was a little child i also had a set of lego given to me by my family and as i just mentioned also something called Meccano 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 so uh, instead of plastic the pieces that you used to build things with were made of metal and there it is a yes, Meccano you, set. I hated Meccano oh because it was uh, it was the sort of a, a gift that's given to boys to encourage them to do uh, sort of mechanical things DIY and get them used to uh, using tools uh, nuts and bolts and it was like miniature sort of bits of metal and you had nuts and bolts and you had to screw it all together and use these miniature spanners and screwdrivers and things it was very fiddly very fiddly everything was small all of the screws <laughs> yes. and the nuts and you always lost them and i was always being told off by my mother because when she was doing the vacuuming when she was cleaning the carpet all these small nuts and screws would go up the hoover yes. up the vacuum cleaner so my mum was always telling me off i wish you'd clear up that meccano after you've played with it i keep i keep getting bits bits of your meccano going up my my vacuum cleaner yes it was <laughs> it was it was annoying you used to make you could make all sorts of towers out of it, it uh, um i suppose it was preparing you for for, for life working on a building site uh, <laughs> well or that, in construction well that's interesting because on the box <laughs> it says on the box turns a boy's world into a man's world interesting is that interesting. what it says <laughs> i don't quite yes it says it turns a boy's world into a man's world well it didn't work for us <laughs> that of course nowadays that would be very very sexist because what it should say is it turns a young person's world into an adult's world yes because women might want to go into construction see we have to be careful of those those nouns and pronouns nowadays you can get a big slap in the face gifts and presents uh, if you're not careful back then uh, were uh, were very focused on uh, stereotypical uh, views of what a man and a woman uh, is uh, is going to do when they grow up so uh, presents for for girls used to be very much centered around dolls well and this is cooking. yes this is something uh, that, that was always ingrained in society so you gave boys toy soldiers and girls they had dollies uh, i had both no that explains no a surprise, lot yes no surprise there <laughs> yes which was <laughs> what i was trying to say that's why my father taught me how to make gunpowder yes probably <laughs> it didn't do anything for you though he must have thought there was a third world war on the way yes there was always a big puff in your house <laughs> there's no answer to that a puff of smoke <laughs> that's what i meant i know now a lot of people say mr duncan did you ever play computer games when you were small yes would you like to see my computer game this is actually the computer game that i had as a child and i'm sure you had it as well steve we're using the word computer very loosely here yeah so it wasn't like the computer games that we have now there no. you can see the console 
and you can see the actual computer game and you can see it's a very simple game it was just two two bats and one tiny ball and what you had to do is knock the ball past the other person and it used to make a little every time you 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 hit the ball uh, and do you remember the name of the game Steve uh, the one we had was called grandstand the actual game itself though it had a particular na a name the the actual game well it was sort of tennis wasn't it it was called pong was it pong was the name of the game pong pong did it smell p o n g pong <laughs> well it was short for ping pong ah right but they couldn't use ping pong because that's actually copyrighted did you know that fascinating did you know that ping pong is actually copyrighted so you can't use it so instead so we just they used it they had to use just pong instead. so we just used the word ping pong so we're going to be cut off any minute well you can say it but you just can't use it as a brand i think that's what i'm trying right. to say so there it is look at that look at the amazing computer games that were around in the 1970s these there were it. brand new these there were absolutely unheard of i remember when this first came on the market where the people were, were queuing up to buy these video games they were the biggest thing to come along and this was i think this was during the late 1970s probably 1978 I'm going to guess mm, I think it might have been before then 78 maybe 76 yes because uh, I mean we had them when I was a child so uh, it must have been sort of mid 70s I would say yes 75 maybe 76 yes, something yeah. like that my yes. dad used to love playing it <laughs> so so we had computer games when we were small of, of course it wasn't Call of Duty or anything like that it was a very simple game just two two bats and a ball low Beep. resolution Beep. Beep. it was Beep. the early days Beep. very very early days of computer Beep. games there was no animation Beep. nothing Beep. Beep. you like making that noise Beep. don't you i've got all the idioms Beep. here by the way and we're running out Beep. of time Beep. let's have another part of the christmas carol shall we okay right Beep. after this thing yes it's Christmas Eve here in the UK and in some parts of the world it is now <gasps> Christmas Day in some parts of the world so if it is Christmas Day where you are can I say Merry Christmas Happy Christmas have a super time don't eat too much food because that's what we do every year we always eat too much food <laughs> I don't know what Steve's doing it looks like he's getting undressed <laughs> Christmas comes but once a year Christmas comes but once a year I don't know when I'm on you see no <laughs> <laughs> I'm still waiting for that monitor we've noticed well maybe next year I will buy one I, I need more donations you see I need more donations that I can buy a monitor for mr. Steve he needs a new computer first it's so on, would you like to read legs oh would you like to read the next part I've got it here waiting of a, of a Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens here we go so Scrooge up with where we left Scrooge on the last reading he was on his way home it was cold dark damp and a little scary because they wouldn't have had many street lights around back in those days so finally Scrooge arrives at his front door but just as he is about to put the key in the lock a ghostly green light appears before him and what seems to be a human face briefly stares back at him Scrooge the face spoke once and then was gone Scrooge froze in terror on the spot could it be Jacob Marley his former partner of course not by coincidence Marley had died seven years ago on this very day Christmas Eve 
Shrugging off his fright, Scrooge walked into his house, sat down, poured himself a hot bowl of gruel. Sitting comfortably in his high-backed chair, tired and a little shaken from his earlier fright, Scrooge began to eat. And that is it. We have the next part coming up coming before... Up. Before we end at four o'clock. Oh, it's a shame. I don't, I don't want to go today. And we've got so much to do. We still have a lot of things to do. We will try to squeeze as much in as possible. Of course, we have the mystery idioms. Let me just show you the mystery idioms very quickly. There is the first one, and there is the second one. I'm sure I'm going to get lots of complaints about this one. So there they are today's mystery idioms but what are they if you know if you think you know please let me know we had a lovely meal last week in much wenlock the place we live in and oh my goodness what it was absolutely delicious so tomorrow we will be making our christmas lunch we will have turkey which is traditional but there are other things that people sometimes have instead of turkey is that right steve they do on christmas day you can have a goose which is similar to a turkey really just a slightly uh, different type of bird uh roast goose people like to also to have uh, uh sometimes people have roast beef but not really that's more of a sort of a traditional sunday lunch but they might have ham that's a very common one, which is pork, uh, of course, from the pig. So it's all very meat heavy. So if you're a vegetarian, but of course, if you are a vegetarian, you can have a you can have a nut roast. In fact, we were going to have a nut roast for Christmas. Uh, but in the end, we decided to have turkey instead. I think if I had a choice between nut roast and turkey, I, I'm sorry, but I, I, I really can't resist having turkey if, if I was completely honest with you so yes you can have duck duck or, or ham. of course goose 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 so people like to eat goose at christmas and of course those vegetarians they will have nut roast so even if you are a vegetarian you will still have a christmas meal and of course with the christmas meal you have vegetables don't you steve you do actually i had a nut roast because we had a, a work Christmas party. Oh, OK. And I opted for the vegetarian option, which was a nut roast. And it was absolutely delicious. So I had all the same vegetables, but I had this sort of a vegetarian uh, replacement for the meat. And it was absolutely delicious. In fact, I think it was nicer than the, than the meat. Oh, sounds like you enjoyed it. The live chat is very busy at the moment. Let, let's just have a look at the live chat. So the live chat is on the screen, right? Oh, it was on the screen and now it's not there. Oh, that's good. Thank you, YouTube. We're going to do the idioms, Mr. Duncan. Thank you, YouTube, for that. Tala Khan is guessing your age, Mr. Steve. Mohammed says you are turning a blind eye and a deaf ear to our comments. So please, can you let us participate with you instead? Well, we are reading some of the messages out today. Also, Belarusia is here. Hello, Belarusia, one of my regular viewers. Thank you very much for joining me. What a lovely Christmas Eve, Mr. Duncan and Mr. Steve. Greetings to you both. I have spent a lovely time with you today. Also, Ute R is here. Thank you very much, Ute, for your donation, by the way. I did receive a lovely donation from you on my paypal so thank you very much for that uh, very very lovely what a lovely christmas gift oh thanks a lot i believe mr steve you have some idioms connected with... down here <laughs> i've Look prepared at... them specially you are so excited i'm very excited yes <laughs> so tell us tell us about these idioms what are they actually connected with they're connected with christmas really they're connected with gifts or Christmas uh, so you will soon see them some of them are phrases some of them are idioms but they're connected with it there's nothing really that's directly connected with Christmas well the sort of is but anyway let's get straight into it here's the first one 
don't look or never look a gift horse in the mouth can ah, you see that yes that i can see it yes yes so the word gift is the word used. gift is in there so don't look a gift horse in the mouth that means if you receive a gift do so graciously without voicing criticisms even if you don't like the gift or the person giving it to you mm. so it really means if someone gives you a gift you don't really like don't be ungrateful just accept it yes for example auntie betty gave me socks for christmas i didn't want socks and somebody might say to you well don't look a gift horse in the mouth that's it i wonder where the expression comes from i wonder what the actual background is of that because that's well, a very apparently it's it, it comes from uh, if somebody uh, gives you a horse uh then you shouldn't look into the horse's mouth to see the age of the horse because you can tell the age of a horse from the state of its teeth apparently and uh, so you should just accept the gift you shouldn't say oh someone's given me a horse i wonder how old that horse is let's have a look at its teeth mm. so that's where it comes from it just means accept the gift you know uh, what, in the spirit of what it's meant to be you done. know what i always thought steve i always thought that that was connected with uh, the trojan horse so i always thought that had something to do with the trojan horse with with the, the, those people trying to sneak their way in inside a big wooden horse that was of course being given as a present but there were lots of people hidden inside i always thought it was that you see trojan horse. well no it, well i did as well but this you see this version of don't look a gift horse in the mouth means you do accept the gift unconditionally and there's there's nothing hidden behind it really whereas a gift horse if you just use the phrase gift horse well that is has slightly different connotations so that is related to what you said there that if is, is if somebody gives you if somebody says that present is a gift horse that means you've got to be a bit it means beware ah. because there might be something behind that gift i.e uh, a trojan horse full of uh, full of soldiers going to take over your city <laughs> yes so interesting slightly subtle so if you just use the phrase don't look a gift horse in the mouth that just means don't be ungrateful just accept the gift even if you didn't like it because okay you might not get another one right we've got to squeeze another one in we're, we're only going to have time for one more one and then more we've, we've no got, surely not we've got another scrooge reading How about? and also i've got a lovely little ending for today's live stream because tomorrow is christmas day here but of course many people now are celebrating christmas day already because it's after midnight where they are so Merry Christmas to those who are already celebrating Christmas Day. We have to wait for a few more hours, unfortunately. So we have still about six, seven, eight. We still have eight hours to wait before we eight get hours. to Christmas Day. Here's another gift related one. OK. Gift, the gift of the gab. Ah, the gift of the back. The <laughs> I can't even say I haven't got the gift of the gab, have I? The you gift can, of the gab. You can sit back. Ability to talk to others in a confident and persuasive manner. For example, salespeople, radio presenters. Mr. Duncan has the gift of the gab. He can talk for hours about English. You know what? I, I, I saw that one coming. You saw that one coming. I thought I thought Mr. Steve is about to use an example and it's going to involve me. <laughs> so look. If you've got the gift of the gab, it means that you're very good at talking, presenting and uh, very confident and persuasive, uh, as is Mr. Duncan, of course. The only problem is, of course, if 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 you have the gift of the gab, sometimes it can be a gift to the person doing the talking. But to other people, it might not be a gift. Maybe it is very unwelcome. So some people say that I have the gift of the gab. I think you do a bit, Steve, as well, because, you know, in your line of work, you, you have a, a certain requirement to be able to speak. Yes. Well, I'm in sales. So you've got to have a bit of the gift of the gab in sales. Here's, I'm going to get another one in. Come on. I'm in control. Oh, I see. God's gift to women. Oh, OK. God's gift to women. This is an expression used in a disapproving way. A humorous or derisive phrase you can to describe back. a man 
who sees himself as very attractive to women uh, it's really a man that's got an over inflated ego about ah. himself he thinks he's very attractive to men mm. but he isn't really <laughs> he thinks uh, he thinks he's attractive <laughs> to men <laughs> women he thinks he's very attractive to women there we go for example mark thinks he's god <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Fro Cl uh, professor freud would have a field day with that for example mark thinks he's god's <laughs> <laughs> mark thinks he's god's gift to women <laughs> but don't look at him he's overweight and drives that beaten up old c uh -huh. car <laughs> so he thinks he's god's gift to men who thinks he's attractive to women but he really isn't hasn't got much to offer so very... women will normally say oh he thinks he's god's gift to women to women yes well he could be god's gift to men of I course these you know yes i think i think uh, uh let's not uh i think professor freud would have a lot to <laughs> say about that oh right it would appear mr steve ah, well i've got to use the expression god's gift to man it would appear mr steve oh what does that mean then well that's got a slightly different meaning uh it's actually got two meanings it's not used that often to be fair but if uh for example this is an attractive woman for example a film star who is irresistible to men Oh, I see. So when you use, if a man uses an expression, look at that. Look at Angelina Jolie on the catwalk. She's God's gift to men. On the catwalk. Uh, to walk. women. <laughs> on the catwalk. <laughs> Song again. Do you have any, do you, do you know who Angelina Jolie is? Uh, she's, is she an actor? She's not a model. I know, but she's attractive to men. But she's not on the catwalk. All right, the red carpet. The red carpet. Uh, it's, but if a man uses that expression to a woman that's not that's actually a compliment whereas when a woman uses the expression oh he thinks he's god's gift to women that's meant in a in, in a humorous uh humorous way but this is meant seriously yeah she really is but also it also means uh, something or someone that is considered of benefit to mankind ah. as well uh, so artistic expression a painting could be described as God's gift to man very good mankind so nice just nice <laughs> nice heavy religious tones there yes as well. because of course we're coming up to Christmas Day here in the UK another well another eight hours to go here I could, I could have said earlier how many people have we got watching this show right now and more and more people could come into the show and we would say the more the merrier yeah are you still squeezing these uh, in yes i don't want any more stop it stop producing my can show. i bring my friend to the party yes you can the more the merrier <laughs> good can we have no more of those idioms or expressions oh, no you'll more cut me off you you've got the control over the microphone there haven't I you? do I, i'm not going to cut you off steve i would never do that we're going to have uh, another part from a christmas carol aren't we we are so shall we do that now because we are running out of time right so now here it comes yes don't worry mr got steve to, down I, here i will talk for a moment whilst you rustle around and find the next part of charles dickens a christmas carol so that's coming very soon we'll be finishing today with a lovely bit showing some christmas lights and also I'm going to wish everyone Merry Christmas in their own language. That coming up at wow. the very end, the very end of today's live stream. Simona is here. Yes, Simona is here. Thanks, Simona, for joining me today. Merry Christmas. What are you going to eat this evening? We're not going to eat much food tonight because tomorrow we'll be eating lots and lots of food because it's Christmas Day so tomorrow loads of food tonight just a small meal are you ready mr. Steve I'm ready here it is the next part of Charles Dickens a Christmas Carol 
the scrooge has gone inside frightened by that experience that ghostly experience uh by his front door so he's gone inside now uh, and he's uh, he was been eating and then suddenly the doorbell rang but who could be calling at such a late hour the clock had just struck midnight scrooge looked out of his bedroom window and down towards his front door but there was no one there suddenly the sound of footsteps and rattling chains filled the air scrooge sat down again by now shaking with fear then without warning the bedroom door flew open and a ghostly figure entered the room his face white with dead staring eyes his body bound with chains behind him dragged a large metal cash box what do you want with me screamed scrooge much replied the ghost do you not recognize me in life i was your partner jacob marley i don't believe you said scrooge you might be an undigested bit of beef or an underdone potato there's more of gravy than the grave about you <laughs> these words angered marley so much that he roared with rage making the whole room shake oh, i believe i believe screamed scrooge marley's ghost spoke again my greed has forced me to wear these chains forever you scrooge have a chance to escape this fate tonight you will be visited by three ghosts the first will arrive at one o'clock then the ghost vanished oh my goodness i love that so there it is a teaser that's what we call that a teaser so there it is part of charles dickens a christmas carol if you want to see the rest of it well i can tell you now that the video is on my youtube channel and also i will paste it onto the live chat right now and i've just done that so now it's on the live chat and also under this video as well the whole story read by me and that is available on my youtube channel thank you so much steve for getting involved today the two hours as usual have gone by so quickly i can't believe it it's already four o'clock and apparently in hong kong it is now christmas day oh christmas day in hong yeah. kong so merry christmas to those watching in hong kong it is now christmas day we have to wait unfortunately for, an for another eight hours and before I bet, uh, sorry mister i bet also in malaysia as well indonesia uh, i bet it's christmas there now because i think so hours. i think so yes yeah. so so many places now in asia are starting to celebrate christmas day as well anyone from malaysia watching i don't know indonesia? there's no one there's no one saying that they are in malaysia if you are watching in malaysia please let me know but we do have lots of people all around the world watching at the moment we also had a live donation just from full geniso or full wow. geni full genico jose vincente who sent a donation a on christmas the live super chat a christmas present for mr duncan isn't that nice and that's that's what it says it says happy christmas to mr duncan and mr steve isn't that lovely that's we fantastic. we are going to leave now unfortunately we have other things to do we have lots of preparation don't we to do now steve i i've got to wrap all your presents <laughs> all of them Ooh. i it's like going to take me about ooh, two minutes i like the sound of that all of them that means there are lots of presents you won't see much of me tonight <laughs> well i have to do the same thing you see because I, I always like to leave things to the last minute i don't know why sometimes sometimes i do things in a rush at the last minute and that is what i'm doing tonight and i think you're doing the same thing as well steve and while i'm wrapping your christmas presents and writing out your card i'm going to be getting drunk 
on uh, on some alcoholic beverage i don't believe that for a second i had a lot to drink last night because we went round to a neighbor's house uh, for uh, mulled wine and mince pies and i had rather too much to drink you did you had some some special wine last night i, I didn't did. drink anything because i'm i'm a very good boy so <laughs> i but believe that yes well lots of people do you know <laughs> so we'll <laughs> see you next week now next sunday is another special day it is the last day of 2017 and we will be here with you next week on the final day of the year new year's eve next sunday from two o'clock uk time we will be here won't we steve i can't believe it new year we're here for christmas eve and new year because they're <laughs> both on a sunday it's great i i love the fact that christmas eve and new year's eve are always on the same day always on the same day so exactly a week later so we get to celebrate christmas eve and also new year's eve with you as well so i hope you will have a super week and if you are celebrating christmas today or tomorrow if it hasn't arrived yet can i wish you a happy christmas have a super time and even if you're not even if you're not have fun why not that's what life is for we'll see you later uh, i've got something planned here to end the show we were going to talk about pantomime we'll do that next week also next week i will give you the answers to the live to the mystery idioms so we'll we'll hold that over to next week oh i'm so naughty so we have <laughs> the end of the show oh it's not fair oh do we really have to go oh that's not very I'm to stay for longer that's not very nice is it well sadly we have to go have you enjoyed it steve i have thank you once again for inviting me and asking me to help out i've thoroughly enjoyed it and i hope i uh, hope everybody out there has also enjoyed it as well thanks for your stories today and also thanks for sharing your christmas memories and of course mine as well we had a lot to talk about we will be back next week thank you very much for your lovely messages so many people ts thank you very much rosa thank you as well analytic brain thank you for your greetings simona talha everyone who has helped today to make today a fun experience thank you very much thanks steve thank you and merry christmas to everyone if you celebrate christmas and just merry holiday time if you don't stay happy keep a smile on your face and if you are celebrating christmas have a good one we definitely will i will see you next sunday on the 31st of december the last day of 2017 next week 2 p.m uk time all i have to say now is thanks for watching me talking to you live and of course you know what's coming next to talk for now for now <laughs> shall we do that again if you want one two three ta -ta ta -ta for, for now. now merry christmas <laughs>